Will energy devices cause facial fat loss? It's a question that I get asked an awful lot on my social media posts when we are talking about different energy-based devices. And the answer is a little bit complicated. When we think about facial anatomy, the structure of the face is divided into layers. So the skin is the top layer and the skin is at most a couple of millimeters thick. We then have a layer of subcutaneous fat beneath the skin, and then beneath that is a layer called the SMAS, which is a connective tissue layer. Different energy devices will target different layers. Part of the answer involves understanding the depth that that energy is delivered to and how precisely that energy is delivered. The main concerns around facial fat loss tend to come when we are treating with devices that pass energy through the fat layer. With all devices, all of the well-known and reputable ultrasound devices, many of them do pass energy through the fat layer and are designed to precisely target this mass layer to deliver tissue tightening. If that energy is incorrectly placed and is placed into the fat, then yes, facial fat loss can be a side effect and risk. And this is why with treatments like this, there is so much expertise involved in understanding how to read an ultrasound image to ensure you are delivering the energy at that perfect depth in that patient and in that area of the face. It can't be a one size fits all treatment because if it is, some people will experience facial fat loss. So provided you're in the hands of a true expert with these devices, you you can get great results. Radio frequency microneedling is a little bit more complicated. I have seen many patients over the years who do report noticing facial fat loss after radio frequency microneedling treatments. The most common area I hear about this in is around the eyes and that can ring true when we think about the fact that the skin in those areas is much thinner. If you're using one delivery depth or even altering your delivery depth but not enough, you could deliver energy and heat into to the subcutaneous fat around that delicate area. My answer isn't as straightforward as yes or no. It's to do with not just the device, but also the expertise of the practitioner you're using. You may research a particular device that you've seen in the press and find that there are five different clinics doing it and that they're all charging very different prices. This will also reflect the experience and expertise of the practitioner doing the treatment. For me, that's where this really comes into play because energy devices do require tailoring and artistry depending on your unique facial structure, your skin and your anatomy. And if that's respected, then the risk of fat loss is minimal, not absent, but minimal. And if we really understand that and start to choose not just the device, but also the person doing it carefully and understanding that there is a specialty here, then great results can be achieved. If this content has been useful for you, please give it a thumbs up or send me a little message below. And please do subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this.